Hey, welcome everybody to this video on unsupervised classification in QGIS. So in this video, we're going to show you how to do unsupervised classification on a satellite image. And here's the workflow. We're going to batch clip the input rasters. We're going to change a couple of them from 32-bit to 8-bit data so that they all are in the same format. We're going to create a band set, define the band weights, which are essentially going to rescale the input rasters. We're going to compute principal components, um, keep probably five of them. Then we're going to use those principal components rasters as inputs to, un to unsupervised k-means and ISO data algorithm. If this sounds good, stay with us. If you want to jump just to the classification part, you can go basically to the, the kind of last third of the video. OK, so we're assuming you have some prior knowledge, uh, and you can check these videos if you need it. Um, intro to classification, supervised classification, and unsupervised classification. These present the theory. Likewise, this video has the theory of principal component analysis. Um, and if prior to this video, if you want to click along, we've also done uh, textural classification to generate some input rasters. And we just finished a video on supervised classification. All right, so let's jump right into it here. We've got a QGIS project. Um, the goal is to convert, uh, is to classify this Landsat image of Yellowstone National Park. It's a TM sensor taken in 1989 after the wildfires. You can see burned areas of the park are in dark here, unburned forest in green, as well as some other uh, user classes like water, meadow, and bare rock. So we're trying for unsupervised classification. Um, the first thing we need to do, actually, oh, let me introduce you to the rasters. So um, in addition to this multi-band clipped raster, we also have a couple of uh, rasters here that are outputs from our textural classification. So that would be the uniformity raster and the entropy raster. Okay, We're going to see in a second these are in 32-bit floating point format. We also have these original Landsat grayscale bands. These are have not been clipped yet, and this is band 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 7. So in this video, we are actually going to need to clip these so that we can use them as inputs into the principal component analysis algorithm, which doesn't allow us to use a mask on the fly. OK, so let's start out with uh, clipping. And we're going to do that using this tool. Uh, Actually, why don't we use this tool, Clip Raster by Mask Layer. And we can actually run this as a batch process, which is pretty cool. Um, and so the input layer, we can go to Select from Open Layers. And we can just quick select the bands of the Landsat that we want to clip. We do not need to clip the textural inputs because they are already clipped. So we'll hit OK, add those there. The mask also selects from open layers. It's going to be the Yellowstone uh, outline shape file. Hit that. Then we can do a quick fill down here. And then we're going to leave everything at the default here. Um, the last except for this last thing, which is the output file name. And so I'm going to click on that. Uh, make sure you're in the right folder where you want to be. And then put in a root name. I'm going to call this Yellowstone PCA, Yellowstone PCA input. That's going to be the root name. And <clears throat> then we're going to actually um, fill with numbers. So it's going to automatically assign these, um, these root names to us. And keep in mind, um, numbers 1 through 6 over there correspond to bands 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 7. So we got a little bit of a mismatch. Actually, just so we don't confuse ourselves, let's manually change this one to be 7. So now they actually are going to be matched with their bands. All right, so we'll hit Run, and hopefully that will clip them pretty quickly. OK, so they've been clipped. They have not been added yet. So you have to go Add Data, Raster, Find where you put them, and then add them back to your project as single band rasters. OK, here's the six I created. Hit Open, hit Add, and I now have them in my project. 
Okay, so the next problem we have to deal with is that we now have the uh, Landsat bands, um, but they are in 8-bit uh, data, and we want to combine them into a single band set with our uh, textural bands down below. And unfortunately, the textural bands are in 32-bit uh, floating point right now, so we need to get them all into 8-bit data. And just to show you how you know that, I right-click, I go to Properties, Information, and I can see this is in 32-bit floating point. So that's a problem. So what I'm actually going to do here, another, another problem is that um, if we want to encode them as 8-bit data, we're going to need to actually multiply them. Because if we encoded this as 8-bit data directly, we would just have zeros and ones, basically, or maybe only zeros. So we're going to multiply this one by 100. So the the values, the integer values, will range from you know, 0 to 40. And we're going to multiply this one uh, by 10. So its values will range from 0 to 48. And we can do this in one shot using uh, one of the raster calculators. There's a few different ones. And the one you want to use is this GDAL one right here. So do not use the, the kind of built-in QGIS one, use this one that's under the GDAL category. And the reason we're doing that is actually because it has an option right down here to output the raster as byte. So byte just, that's the default for 8-bit data. So it lets us do a little math and store it as 8-bit data. The syntax here is a little confusing, but you basically have to tell it uh, what your input layer is. So in this case, we're going to start out with the um, the uniformity texture layer, and we are going to multiply it by 100. So down here in the expression, it's going to be A times 100. We can leave everything else blank. And why don't we save it as a file name? Just, oh, well, we don't need to save it as a file name. We'll just run it, and it will pop up for us. OK, it popped up for us. I'm going to actually go, and just, just so we don't get crazy confused, I'm going to call this ASM. 8-bit, actually we'll call it ASM times 100, 8-bit. All right, so now we know what that is. And then um, let's do that one more time, this time to transform our uh, entropy layer. And remember, this time we're going to multiply it by 10, not by 100. And we, this time we are going to put it into 8-bit here, and we'll run that again. Okay, that finished. Again, here it is. We'll rename this as well. Always using descriptive names. Okay, so now we've got everything clipped, everything in 8-bit format. We're ready to start our supervised classification. And the first step is to go to the SCP plugin. If you don't have it yet, you've got to install the plugin, then you find it here, open up this interface, and start out uh, defining a band set. Um, we're going to do this from the, the single band list. So we'll hit the refresh button to make sure all the single bands are showing. First, I'm going to go ahead and add uh, the clipped versions of our Landsat bands 1 through 7. Then I'm going to add our entropy that was clipped and reformatted. Then I'll add our uniformity texture layer. And so keep in mind, as you do classification, you can add any layers you want, as long as they're in the same format, same extent, and same pixel size. OK, so that is our band set. We can now proceed to define weights or to scale these bands. Um, and the reason we do this is that uh, each of these rasters has a different numerical range. Some have small numbers, some have big numbers. And we need them to all have a roughly similar numerical range in order for principal component analysis to successfully compute the principal components. So to, to normalize them or to rescale them, we're going to use a normalization procedure in which we multiply each raster by 1 over its mean pixel value. Okay, That's actually the same as just dividing every pixel by the mean of the raster. So to do that, we need to compute the means of each raster uh, within the Yellowstone uh, Park study area. 
And for that, we're going to use zonal statistics, which we've used in a previous video. OK. And um, what's cool about this, and I'm just going to do these in order. So we're going to start with uh, this first one, the first Landsat band. That's our raster layer. Our vector overlay is the Yellowstone shape file. What's going to happen each time we run this? It's going to compute the mean of that raster within the shapefile area. Then it's going to add that mean into the attribute table of the shapefile. And so um, we can put a prefix here. And the prefix we're going to use is, um, I'm just going to call it PCA1 to denote that's the, the, the first PCA input. And here I'm going to tell it only do the mean value. Don't compute any of the other statistics. OK, so with that all ready to go, I can hit Run. Doesn't take but a minute. And the cool thing is here, we have to do this eight times. But it's pretty fast, because all we have to do is just change the input, change the prefix, and now we'll repeat it for that second band of the Landsat image. So we're going to repeat this for all the bands of the Landsat image, as well as for the two textural layers, right? the entropy and the, the uniformity, or the ASM and then we'll rejoin the video. And here we are doing our final one, which is going to be on the entropy raster. I'll use the entropy prefix, hit run. And now what I want to do is go take a peek inside the attribute table, where you can see that each of these uh, means has been computed. So we'll go to the shape file that we were using as a mask, right click, open the attribute table, We've got a bunch of junk in here, but if you go all the way to the right, that's where your newest additions are going to be. And here it is, PCA 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, ASM, and Entropy. So those are the values that you just um, computed, the means within the, the outlier. Click left at the far left here, highlight the whole row, Control Copy, Control C. Um, then go to a blank spreadsheet document. Right click, I use this paste values, and a lot of this stuff is junk, so we can go out and delete most of it except for what we need, which is here. And here they are. So again, these are the means, the mean pixel value within the Yellowstone shape file for each of our input bands. Six bands from the Landsat image and two textural bands. So now to make these into weights, remember we want to divide each band by its mean. So the weights are going to be 1 over the actual mean. So we can just quickly compute those in Excel. Um, and then unfortunately, we need to manually enter these. So we have to find our way back to the SCP weights, weights thing we can get so we can see both screens here. And here it is for number 1 is 0 0.0176, OK? Now I'm going to fill in the remaining seven of these, and then we'll be ready to do PCA. OK, we're back, and we've got everything updated. One thing I did notice, which almost tripped me up, was um, the way I had done the calculations here, I did ASM first and then entropy. But in my list over here, it was entropy, then ASM. So just be careful that you, you put the correct weight into the correct row over here. OK, so now our rasters are going to be scaled correctly, which is awesome. And we're ready to try principal component analysis. So let's go uh, down to uh, band processing. Got all these different tabs here. One of them is PCA. Um, we're going to use band set number one. Now, if you recall, um, when you do principal component analysis, it uh, generates the same number of eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and principal components as you have bands. So we have we have eight we have eight input data sets, which means our data is eight dimensional. Um, so in theory, it would put out eight eigenvalues when we do this. Um, however, you may also remember that typically it's only the the higher order principal components that capture most of the variability. So it gives you the option to only output you know, those higher order ones. So I'm going to say, yeah, we don't need eight of these. Let's take the first five principal component outputs. OK, here we go. Let's hit Run. Let's select a folder. And oh my gosh, hope for the best, everybody, because 
This is crazy. Hurrah, it worked. I'm so happy. So it added our five principal component rasters. And this essentially represents each raster is the first, second, third, fourth, or fifth principal component score of each pixel. And what you can see is that different land covers look different, right? So here's the lake. In the fifth, in the fifth component, everything looks kind of similar. In the, in the fourth component, lakes are bright, other things are dark. Ah, cool. In the third component, it looks like the burned areas are really, really bright. Not sure about this one. And in the first component, it looks like kind of green or vegetated areas are really bright. So this is great. So if that didn't work for you, if it failed and choked, which happened to me many times, um, make sure that all of your inputs in your band set have the same pixel size, the same extent, the same data format, and are properly scaled. Check all that stuff and it should work. All right, so now the final step. We have taken our inputs, we transformed them using principal component analysis, essentially yielding us a new set of inputs in which each of these five principal component bands, these are now all linearly independent. They represent different aspects of our landscape. And now we're going to put these into the, uh, an unsupervised classifier and see what we get out. So to do this, actually, we're going to have to actually create a new band set with these new inputs. So I'm going to go back to the plugin. I'm going to uh, delete the first band set that we had. I'm going to refresh the single band list. And I'm going to look for these PCA bands. There they are. OK. I'm going to add them. And um, we don't need to rescale these, actually, because the principal components scores are all already scaled on the same scale. So that's one step we don't have to do. So we can go right up to processing. Um, and this time, we're going to use one of these clustering tools. Okay. And here we have the choice to try either k-means or ISO data, which are both explained in uh, an earlier video on theory of unsupervised classification. Let's try ISO data. Let's try it with. Um, let's aim for. Let's only aim for six classes. Let's say ten iterations. Um, the max standard deviation. Let's just leave these at the defaults, and let's say the minimum class size is going to be, oh, 10,000 pixels seems like a reasonable amount. And let's try to run it. It's going to prompt us for a file name. Here we go. Hope for the best. Well, I am very grateful that this one worked, especially since class is starting and lab is starting in five minutes. Um, let's have a quick look at what came out here. Um, so this is the classified image. Um, again, this is unsupervised classification. So keep in mind, um, these classes don't necessarily have a physical meaning. Um, however, right away you can start to see that there are is probably some uh, physical relationships here. For example, class number five, this lighter blue, is clearly water. Uh, Class number three, the darker blue, looks like it could be forests. But it doesn't actually look like this classification came out very well. So I strongly recommend that you iterate with this. And in particular, try it again, um, allowing more iterations, uh, more or less classes. Also, probably increasing this standard deviation a bit or dropping the minimum class size. So play around. You can also try the spectral angle mapping as well instead of the minimum distance um, and see how it works out for you thanks for listening and in our next videos we'll talk about how to clean up your classified images in the post-classification smoothing process